Thank you. It's day two on Legends of Low Code. All three teams have hit their laptops running here at Fort Mason Center to create an intake solution for Pacific Clinics, formerly known as Uplift Family Services. This is a almost unrealistically short amount of time to build an app in, but that's the beauty of this challenge. It's a big ask. It's an entire process life cycle. I would say the odds of my team winning are probably one out of three. <laughs> All right, can I have everyone's attention, please? Trailblazers, welcome to day two. I hope you all got a little bit of rest, because this would not be a reality show if we didn't throw a wrench into everything halfway through. Eleanor here has a little bit of news for you. Good morning, everyone. Last night, we realized we needed to add a validation process. While we love automation, we need our managers to have eyes on key pieces of the process. Low code is a very quick way to build a system. And it also means a lot of agility for changing in the future, which is key, you know, as we've all seen with the pandemic, that ability to like add a new form into your onboarding process overnight is really a high value capability. So I ask that you add that workflow into your app. That will allow our managers to, again, officially enroll kids into our program. Now don't panic. You're all gonna get a few minutes with Eleanor to ask her follow-up questions about this here in just a little bit. Well, it looks like they're looking for some sort of approval process, which we can do out of the box. So we'll definitely get it considered. Emergency contact. Date of birth and emergency contact. OK. And then you can Add go date of birth. have that come back in, somebody review it, approve it, and then they can be enrolled in their programs. The contact will be pretty much who we're gearing it towards, whether it's the parent for a housing program right. or a child for a behavioral therapy yes. program. Yeah. So how about we add activity tracking and chatter for case manager collaboration on an intake? I feel like that's a really good idea, but I feel like we're getting to a point we're going to run up against time deadlines. That we may have more things than we can implement today. Yeah. This deadline is no joke. And now, a serious San Francisco storm is raining on our Trailblazers parade. So we have no internet. Uh, at least Lisa and I don't. Yeah. Nana is single-handedly carrying the team right now. My Wi-Fi is very slow. Is it because of the screen or what? Still loading. It's frustrating. The one thing we need is internet. I know, this weather outside is crazy. Do we need to do our, our, our deep breaths deep again? Breath. All right, let's do it. Everybody in? And out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, does that feel better? Rain or shine, presentations aren't far away. Hi, team. How's day two shaking out? Pretty good. We did get a, a monkey wrench thrown, yeah. thrown in. <laughs> Sorry about that. Eleanor made me do it. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. But like we were saying, that's that's pretty typical software development process. The requirements change. You, you adjust and you, you move on. If there was one thing you had to you learn from and would do differently, what would it be? not start building quite so fast. We were really worried about the time, so we just started building. And there was a point where we were all working on different things and we had to sort of stop and come together and, and decide who was gonna work on each thing. So I think I would take a little bit more time up front to do the plan. So I know you've been putting a ton of time into the app building process. Have you thought at all about the pitch and the presentation? We've been working on the presentation all along to make sure that everything that we're building, that we've got that message and we can tell that story at the end of the day. How are you accounting for different users having different levels of access? We're controlling that through unauthenticated versus authenticated access. That way we're able to expose just the child records to the right parents in the right organizations. Because you know that the folks at Uplift aren't going to just say like, oh, somebody doesn't have internet access, I guess I'll just ignore them. They're going to make the effort to figure out how to get that person into the program no matter what. So we need to make sure that the system reflects that same attitude. Sounds like you're using a lot of empathy in your approach. You guys did a good job listening. It was great to check in with them. I still feel like with Team Adventure, they're holding their cards kind of close to their chest. And so it's kind of hard to glean like what really is going on in there. And I have to say, answering their questions, they were the one group that 
I think, understood the complexities of the referral stream. Are they kind of an underdog, or are they trying to make us think they're the underdog so they can kind of almost surprise us in the end? What did you think, Jess, about how Team Odyssey said that they started working on their presentation right away? I think it's smart, right? Because they're already thinking about their app in terms of a story and a flow. It'd be very dangerous to leave the presentation to the end because that's a big part of the story you're telling. So by addressing that up front, they're going to have maximum chance for success. It looked like they always had a plan B of, you know, it, when they got stuck, they would move on to the next plan and keep passing things around so that it kept the movement going. I, I thought that was pretty impressive. Uh, also, I saw Quest, uh, they mentioned we built too fast and we had to come back and redesign. And I think that's part of the 48-hour challenge too, right? You've, you've got to make decisions right away. And sometimes it's not the right call, but you have to move. I have to wonder, given Quest's comment about spending more time in the planning stage rather than the jumping into solution, you know, that gave me a pause. Did they already have something in mind even prior to getting some clarification? So I think that's a little bit of a theme of wasted time here and how to recover from wasted time. What I did like about what Quest said, though, is the way that they recovered was, yes, kind of resetting and thinking about the overarching solution. That really helps them accelerate after that. We'll have to see how it pans out in a couple hours here. I feel great today. We have a great product that we'll be showcasing later this afternoon for Uplift Family Services. What are we going to do about reporting? I think that would be good for uh, Rick to do it. My team is absolutely amazing. Uh, we come from different backgrounds, and we have a range from four years to 15 years of experience on our team. So it's been great working with them. I feel a lot better. We're aligned on what we're gonna demo. Now we're getting the UI all prepped and ready and the data prepared. Um, feeling good. All right, Trailblazers, we've only got 20 minutes left. I wanna see you clicking a little faster over there. Why don't we do that? Why don't we hide this section if... Um... Yeah, hide the whole section. You would do like a graphic of 18 and like an arrow going down. You don't have to read it. You look at that and you know like reduction 18. These final moments see each team on the cusp of greatness. And we'll put something else there that says you cannot do an intake until the minimum requirements are met over here. It's not the best user experience. Winning this challenge will take every detail and every bit of hustle they can muster. In a perfect world, this app will allow Uplift to focus on the service aspect. What's the impact? What are those impact points that we want to make? That first opening is really important. The first 15 seconds when they're going to make their decision. Presentation time definitely felt a lot farther away this morning than it does right now. Yes. Trailblazers, just 10 minutes left in the competition. Trying to bring a project across the finish line is really tough. What time is it? Okay, so it's time. But it's also just a really amazing experience, too. And so just seeing the Trailblazers embrace that is what this is all about. Only being two days long, there's only so much you can build. So low code is actually that springboard or that accelerator for teams to come together and build something really quickly. All right, Trailblazers, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is you're almost done. The bad news is you have one minute left to finish up whatever you're doing. We have Great, fun. still works. Come on, work faster. Faster, faster, faster. I think I'm grateful that we're still smiling and laughing and having right. a good time. All right, 47 oh, seconds, 46. We are basically asking the Trailblazers to walk in the shoes of our customers. It's been absolutely inspiring to watch them do this. We're very positive that it's going to be very good, but we're also curious to see how the judges are going to, you know, take our presentation, so. The contest is a perfect example of where low code shines. All right, everyone, stop building and back away from the keyboards. We are finished. Coming up, the teams present their apps to the judges, who will walk away with $10,000 for their favorite charity. Find out next time on Legends of Low Code. What I'm really focused on is the storytelling element. One thing I'm really hoping to see is some innovation in the way people are capturing data. The winner is Team 